Go back to the Section 301 report from last year, which basically said China condones lying, cheating, and stealing, and taking our and taking our trade secrets. Those are real serious allegations. The, the concern I have is the way to deal with that isn't to try to force China to buy our goods and defy the law of comparative advantage. The way to deal with that is to focus exclusively on the fact that that they're willing to steal our IP, either directly or or indirectly by forcing JVs. So uh, I've been concerned about how we're handling trade with with respect to China. But I'll tell you, this report that came out in the in the Wall Street Journal came out over the weekend. But it's in today's paper is actually encouraging to me because that's a more direct response to those allegations. So, not permitting China to invest or buy U.S. technology companies is okay to try to stop the concerns that you have when it comes to JVs stealing IP, et cetera. Yeah, exactly. And maybe take it to the next level, which is uh, that's 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 uh, the, the report in the Wall Street Journal is about companies and, and, and curtailing their investment, but also individuals and, and buying property. And it would be a whole, whole heck of a lot easier if we did that with other countries, not just the United We've States going Russia. alone. Uh, no, I'm saying if we, if we went into ch to China with a coalition, right now we're kind of ticking off oh, all of our, we're ticking off all of right. our potential friends, so it'll be hard to, hard to cobble that together. What would happen if the administration said to you when you were running the New York Stock Exchange, you know what, these Chinese companies that want to have IPOs in the United States, you can't do it. You know, I, that was a pretty considerable concern to me because a number of the biggest IPOs that we had during my time at the New York Stock Exchange were, were Chinese companies. So as a business matter, I was concerned. But guess what? It's already happening. You're seeing fewer of the great Chinese tech companies IPO on the New York Stock Exchange. And is that Xiaomi, but is Xiaomi's in Hong Kong. Five years ago, Xiaomi would have, would have been IPOing. Ten cents on here. Ten, ten cents. And you think that's a, hold on, but is that a function of the political landscape or is that a function of deeper... I don't want capital to say better, but, but, but improved capital markets there. It's both, but it's definitely uh, uh, at least partly a function of, of politics. No question. Not and just they, ours, but theirs, Exactly, too? exactly. You, there are, there are, they, the, the, the Chinese government, the CSRC in particular, is whispering uh, to these companies, hey, we really want to see you go public on the mainland, and if you can't go public on the mainland, then you need to at least look at uh, Hong Kong. Could you ever imagine a scenario where a Chinese company that's listed here decides or is told, whispered, actually, you know what, let's just let, leave that alone. Could you, effectively, could you delist yourself and just move yourself to the mainland? That is very, very difficult. And, and it, it would be hard to foresee unless you were ready to forswear the U.S. markets in their entirety uh, because you'd have to tender for essentially all the shares. You'd almost have to buy yourself right. and pay every single shareholder here in America. So I don't foresee that happening, but what you can do is just see the float kind of drift down in the U.S. as, as, you, as you list join. And hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.